Good morning, traders. Welcome to the Bookmap Pro Trader webinar series. Today's the last day uh, of the uh, series. We've had uh, all week long. Uh, today we have Bennett Stein. He's a cryptocurrency trader, and he's going to talk about uh, order flow setups within Bookmap. Uh, I need to go through the risk disclaimer. Trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, we've had Bennett once before. Uh, he's been trading uh, multiple markets for over six years and crypto for three years. Uh, always fascinated with the psychology of the masses and how it applies to the markets. Uh, his YouTube channel, Bit. Bitcoin Trading Challenge maintains a focus on alternative strategies uh, traders can use to profit from uh, various cryptocurrencies. Uh, he has recently uh, created an order flow uh, training course uh, exclusively for Bitcoin uh, futures in Bookmap. And uh, this will, it's not on our marketplace at the moment, but it will be shortly. So uh, uh, more education for you guys uh, on, uh, on cryptocurrency exchanges, et cetera. Um, here's his, um, Bennett's contact information here. Uh, you, you've got his Twitter, YouTube, email, website, and then special offers uh, from Bennett from Bookmap. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, you can you can click on this link here. I, I will cut and paste, um, I'll copy and paste and put into the chat throughout the webinar. Uh, his contact information, take a look right now. I just put it in. Uh, all of this stuff is in there right now, so uh, you don't need to copy it down or anything like that. Uh, let me just turn it right over to Bennett, and uh, and he'll take it away. Sure. Well, good morning, all. All right. Let me see. I'm going to try to share my screen soon. Okay. Go to meeting. Later. Okay. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Yeah, I still don't see your screen yet. Yeah. Do you do you see it now? I think it should be showing. So when I clicked uh, the show. No. No, I do not. Okay. Screen. Now now I do. Now I oh, do. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, glad that's working. Hello, everyone. So I'm actually going to start this off with a presentation, but let's do something a little bit different. So recently, I have been a pretty big proponent of any trading system it's really important that you are quite focused. And, and the best way that I've found to be focused is just a quick breathing exercise. So if you guys want, of course, this is optional. Um, we are just gonna do a 15 to 20 second breathing exercise through the nose. And after that, we are gonna go into some examples where I hope everyone gets uh, all of them right. But uh, maybe the breathing exercise will help you with that. So let's just begin by just breathing through our nose for. 20 seconds. Okay. Now let us begin. Okay, so now I'm going to hit you guys with the first question. So right now you are looking at a sample of uh, XBT USD from Bitmax. Now, if you were to look at this setup right here, would, would you rather be more bullish or bearish? I'm going to reveal what the answer was after, but I really encourage you guys to do your absolute best to determine whether this is bullish or bearish. Whatever so, you do. Actually, let me interrupt. I'm yeah. sorry, just for a moment here, um, because the the resolution of your screen is um, it's it's quite. Uh, I think you're on a laptop, right? A, a Mac, yeah. Mac yeah. A laptop. Um, so uh, everyone, like uh, on the top of the um, uh, toolbar for the GoTo webinar, there it says Zoom. So you can click on that, and then there's different options in here: actual size, scale to fit. Uh, and then you also have zoom by 100%, or if zoom two, and there's a drop down there. Uh, so uh, uh, you know maybe you you want to make that bigger or, or smaller. If you zoom to 100%, uh, then you can uh, look at a bigger picture here or get a bigger um, uh, uh, resolution here. Okay. Yes. Sorry guys, if you guys can't can't see it and you're gonna have to like squint your eyes. <laughs> um, but what we're looking at here is XBT USD from Bitmax. Now. 
what do you think is going on here? Do you, do you guys think that this is more likely than not to be bullish, or do you think this is more likely or not to be bearish? I'm going to give you guys 20, 30 seconds to determine this one, and then I'm going to show you guys the answer, and we'll talk about what was happening and why it happened. Okay, so if you guys want to post in chat your, your prediction, just don't look up the answer because it's pretty easy to see what had happened to Bitcoin, um, but I encourage you not to do that because, you know, that's cheating. All right, so hopefully you guys said that this was more bullish than bearish because lo and behold, boom. So if you guys actually look at where it says 24th of September, 24th of September at seven o'clock, that was the bullish move that you have been looking at before, but it kind of pales in comparison to what happened uh, more recently where Bitcoin flew up a few hundred dollars, you know, a, a few percent. So if we go back and just let's go analyze here, what was going on here? So the, the first thing that I can notice is that it looks like the market buys are clearly dominating over the market sells. In this kind of situation, I'm not looking to short. I know there was a high volatility move up at around 24th uh, of September to seven, seven o'clock that filled many offers, but this to me just does not look like a situation you wanna short. When you're using order flow, my best advice is, I know this is pretty cliche, but it's to trade the trend. If you see a significant amount of market buying, Typically, I would give that a higher probability that price is just going to continue. So if this was in fact bearish and you were looking to short, I would actually rather short if price was going down below, say, at least 10,350. It began to put pressure on previous uh, resistance areas that could turn into support around the 10,340, 10,350 area. But overall, this is the kind of setup that you should be looking more to buy or at least to be bullish. And as you can see, this is what we got here. So if you had bought on the pullback that had happened around the 10,400 level, that would have that would have worked out quite nicely. Now let's go to one that's I think a little bit tougher because this is on link. I know it looks like it's a little bit all over the place, but what I want you guys to focus on is really the market buying and the market selling. So on Chainlink here, which is another cryptocurrency, one of the largest market caps, do you think that this to you looks like a more bullish setup or a more bearish setup? So if you guys got the first one right, I mean, and you get this one right too, then you're in the upper 25%. Let's see if you can do it. So what's going on here? So we'll give you guys 10 seconds for this. So this is actually a really interesting situation because it's near, it, it's quite similar to what happened before. We can just see a dominance of market buying more recently that's just dominating over the sellers. I don't really see much seller strength besides the move that began around 440 and that went down to about 515. That move looked moderately strong, but it was countered quite quickly by the market buy at 530. So overall, this is not something that I'm saying is quite bearish and price just soars, okay? But in this situation, what's what's going on now? Um, I'm actually gonna, I have another answer to this. So what happened after this? But I want you guys to analyze this order flow right here and tell me what's going on. And do you think that that large market sell is gonna lead to a further sell off? Or do you think that that's just noise, not a signal and price keeps ripping up? So there is a correct answer to this 100%. And um, I'm hoping you guys select the right one. Okay, so hopefully many many of you smart order flow traders here said this looks very, very bearish. Uh, price actually trickled down after this. Let me show you guys. Yeah, so here's the price that price really trickled down. We went from a previous picture around 9.7, 9.65. We went down to about the 9.3 area. So why this happened? Well, we have middling to weak market buys as evidence from the, the green bubbles there. And then we get that large, large, large market sell that leads to a rapid sell off. Now, something that I haven't really talked about yet on, on a bookmap webinar before that I really wanna go more into is trapped traders. So let's go take a look at this. What I always love to do is to identify certain price ranges that likely contain either trapped longs or trapped shorts. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you go look at the trading that happened between six and like 650, you see, uh, you know, price was ranging right there. What we know for a fact is that both shorts and longs were likely entering. So any shorts who had entered got trapped because 
price ripped up without them at about seven o'clock, a little bit before a little before seven o'clock, and this traps them in their positions. So the effect that this has is twofold. One, when we see that a lot of trap shorts are trapped at lower prices, that can indicate that that point will be a future support. The reason why it's a future support is this. If there are many trapped sellers, many trapped shorts, when price goes back down to where those shorts are break even, a lot of them are gonna be inclined to buy back or to exit a break even. I mean, if you've ever been in a losing trade before, let's say you're down 4% on your account, and then price magically just goes right back to your break even, I think that a good number of you are probably going to just want to exit and say, oh man, glad I got out at a 0.3% profit. That's just because of how human psychology works. We are attracted to making money, whether it's 0.3% or 30%, and we hate losing money. And this is something that the markets will take advantage of. So what we see here in this picture and why I'm making such a, a big fuss out of this is go look at what happened around 8.30. All of those traders up there are trapped and any of them who had continued to add to their positions as price trickled lower are just getting deeper, you know, out of the money, deeper trapped. And we can actually kind of see that because in that kind of sell-off, go look at the structure of sells versus buys. It's super interesting. We have smaller market buys that could be trapped traders trying to buy and get a better average price, but then they were smacked down by larger sellers like every single time, as you can see here. And also they didn't really have much opportunity to get out of their trades at break even. So if you start to see this kind of formation, it's more likely than not gonna be bearish. Sells dominating over buys, trapped longs at the top, this is something that uh, is quite bearish. Okay, so I want you guys to keep that mindset and let's go, oops, hopefully I didn't flash all you guys the answer. <laughs> well, if I did, then you guys got a free one here. But uh, speaking of trapped longs and trapped shorts, I want you guys to look at this very, very zoomed out order flow. This is a lot more long-term. This is the trading over a week, seven days. Now, especially focus on, of course, the market sells versus the market buys, but also the, the liquidity and where it is uh, at, at the current prices around September 3rd. So in chat, or you can just you know say it in your mind, do you think that this is more bullish than or bearish? And I challenge you to go beyond that. If you say bullish or bearish, I want you to tell me where do you think traders are trapped that could form a future support or a future resistance, okay? So I'll explain that and I'll let you guys have five seconds to answer, so best of luck. So this is quite uh, bearish. Price tanks and it, it, what we can see here is that the previous picture we had price at around, I know that the, the axis is a bit cut off, that's why it says like 11.28, um, but uh, you know that that axis is just a little bit cut off, so don't worry about that. But what we end up seeing on the previous picture that I want to show you guys is look just how dominant the sellers were. Do you see any strong market buying between September 1st and September 3rd? Any? No. I I, I see nothing at all that indicates to me that this is a kind of setup that I'd want to buy from. If people are consistently selling and selling in quite strong form that's probably more likely than not just going to push prices lower. And then what we see is liquidity is added around the 11.15, 11.14 price area at around you know, later September 2nd. So what does this mean? Well, when we have, when we have a large amount of bidding uh, depth added, the, the question that I always ask is this, is price respecting this limit order? And the answer is absolutely not. If price was actually respecting this limit order, then what we would probably see is A, stronger market buying and weaker market selling because people are convinced that there's a lot of demand, of course. Uh, and then B, we would also see price distancing itself from the limit order because a lot of other uh, traders would be bidding higher and the price should be higher than this. But instead, what do we see? We see heavy market selling. We see price completely unable to go above 1150. This overall is just quite bearish. And trap traders, if you are curious about that, are probably located around the 1200 area. That's where a lot of the trap longs will be. We can actually see some market buys around there too. Okay. So you can see the price just completely sells off. And uh, this, is a, this is a type of situation where you would 100% just not want, to, um, not want to buy, okay? So if you learn everything from this presentation, the, the most important thing for you to know is this. If you see just dominant seller strength, it's probably best not to buy. If you see dominant buyers, it's probably better not to sell, okay? 
And if you want to go a level deeper, then you can also add a trap trader analysis to that to locate support and resistance points. Okay. All right. Let's go do another one. Oops. Okay. I think I just flashed the answer to answer four, but hopefully no one saw that one as well. Um, what's going on here? Th this one is pretty similar to some previous examples. Uh, what we're looking at is the trading that occurred in August over a two-day period. So before I start giving away, you know, what happened here, I'm going to let you guys just look at this and think bearish or bullish. Do, do you think that this is just a oversold price where price is just going to rip right back up? Or do you think that this is just seller strength and price is just going to rip lower? All right, I'll give you guys 10 seconds for this. Okay, so this is showing very strong seller strength, which to me gives a higher probability that price falls. Um, a, a thing that I talk about in my order flow course that I want to show you guys is whenever I look at an uptrend or a downtrend, I have a different name for it. Any uptrend, so such as what happened like August 2nd, August 10th at like uh, 17 o'clock, 18 o'clock, you can do you see that weak bullish run? up from about August 10th, 17 o'clock, up to about August 10th, up over where the vertical line is, there just isn't much buying in that demand run. So when price goes up, I like to call that a demand run. And when price goes down, I like to call that a supply run. And one easier way that you can look at order flow from bookmap is to look at a series of demand runs and a series of supply runs and just determine whether the sellers were stronger during the supply run or were the buyers stronger during the demand run. So if we look here, the, the supply sell-off from August 10th at around 10 o'clock to the low at around 17 o'clock on the same day, the sellers look pretty strong. Uh, the, we can see some pretty large red bubbles. And then on the move back up to higher prices, we just do not see the strongest market buying. Then we see another pretty strong sell-off that began at about August 10th, 22 o'clock. And then you get this. Boom. Price just tanks. Again, this is a situation where if you notice this, this is not something that you're going to want to buy. I mean, I mean, you, you can you can do whatever you want, but this kind of situation to me is one that just screams bearishness. And another reason of that is the disrespected limit orders. If you look at the limit order that was placed around the 11,500 and the limit over limit order that was placed around the upper 11,600s, the bids, do you think that those were respected in any way? Did you see any strong market buys near those bids added? Did you see price distancing itself from those limit orders? Not at all. Price just instead climbed closer and closer to that liquidity. And that to me is just quite bearish. Okay. All right. So hopefully all of these little lessons helped. And now we're at the final example. So definitely take your time with, uh, with this one here. This is much shorter term. Um, but what do you make of what's going on here? Would you rather buy here or would you rather sell here? if you didn't have a choice. If you had to just buy or sell, what do you think the correct option would be here? This one's probably the hardest as well. So brace yourselves. I'll give you guys five seconds. Okay, so the answer is, drum roll please. Oops, and here you go. Price actually moved higher. So let's go back to the previous picture and, and let's go decipher what, what, what's going on here. So this is a situation that actually shows bids being respected. So a lot of other situations where we see those very strong sell-offs, what we notice is that we have a large amount of bids added, and then we just see no market buys, and we see price not distancing itself from those, from those bid orders. Here we see the opposite. We see some pretty strong bids coming in. I mean, uh, uh, pardon me. We see some pretty strong market buys coming in that actually are larger than market sells. And if you look at the most recent string of market buys during that demand run, we actually see some pretty strong market buys. The sellers do not look too strong and they don't really look too energetic to push the price below, let's say the liquidity to around 10,600. And consequently, you know, boom, this happens. And price does in fact soar. You can see that we have a large bids um, that are buying out a lot of large offers. And that to me is typically quite bearish. When you see very, very large market buys just buying through a bunch of offers, that to me tells me that the market is more likely than not bullish. And look what happened. All right, so now I'm gonna do a short five to 10 minute presentation on what can we do to make money on order flow? 
And I'm actually gonna prevent some method, um, present some methods that are a little bit different, but uh, let's go through that. And then I'm going to take questions and we'll go live to the charts. So there are three ways that you can trade cryptocurrency order flow. We have spot trading, we have futures and perpetual swap trading, and we have options trading. Spot trading is when you buy a cryptocurrency and you're buying it with a fixed amount of uh, cash or a fixed amount of Bitcoin. And you're not using leverage, you're not using margin, you just, you, you just buy something with your own money. So consequently, you do not have any price of a margin call, you don't have any price of a liquidation either. So the big advantage of spot trading for order flow is you can hold indefinitely, but that could be a double-edged sword because a lot of traders who actually do spot trade, an issue they have is they buy something and then after it declines like uh, 60%, they just hold it forever. Uh, another issue with spot trading is you cannot short, you can only go long. So this is better, I would say, for longer term order flow trading. If you're worried about uh, getting liquidated, this is definitely a, a better way to do it. But to be honest with you guys, if you're trading order flow, this is not the main method I'd use. Another method that you can use is perpetual swaps and futures. So quick note on what perpetual swaps are. In crypto, perpetual swaps are futures contracts that never expire. Futures contracts are, are kind of like traditional futures contracts in different markets, where these are contracts that will expire at a predetermined date. Now, perpetual swaps carry something called a funding rate. And this funding rate is something you either uh, get paid or you pay out, depending on the uh, difference between the futures price and the spot price, but you can go look up funding rate if you wanna go learn more about that. But really, this is gonna give you access to higher leverage. You also get lower fees than spot, and this is a lot better for shorter term trading because it's lower fees. And a lot of the times these markets are far more liquid than spot trading markets. There is a pretty big drawback though, um, as some cryptocurrency traders will probably attest to, you can get liquidated. A liquidation is when you enter into a perpetual swap or a futures contract. And if the price goes against you enough, you lose all of your margin. What this means is that if you use $1,000 as margin or collateral, and you take on a $25,000 uh, short position, price rips up 8%, you will lose that entire $1,000, okay? That's called a liquidation. And then also funding rates can make things just a little bit more complex, but um, they're, not, they're not too complex. Now let's go to something I've never talked about really ever with order flow, something that's completely really new, but I encourage you guys to actually look at this. Options. Options, options, options. Options trading is a little bit more complex. It involves buying and selling calls and puts. So let's go over this and why would we wanna use this for order flow? This gives you access to leverage. It allows you to limit your risk and get unlimited upside if you buy a call or buy a put. It can also be a really, this is the most important part here. This can be a really good tool to use when taking reversal trades based off of order flow. So with an options contract, when you buy an options contract, the largest, the largest that you can lose is just entitled to the premium that you buy. So if you buy a call for let's say $10 for one call contract on Bitcoin, and let's say price continues to go lower and your call expires worthless, you only lose $10. But let's say instead price rips up $1,000. You make a fair amount of money from buying that call with a fixed risk of only 10 bucks. So that's the really big advantage of buying options. This also can give you more flexibility and methods to profit because instead of just saying, hey, I think price is going to go up or hey, I think price is gonna go down, you can actually make trades based on uh, profiting from wherever price goes, buying volatility, or you can also take trades based on time. So if you think that volatility will be, will be low and that Bitcoin isn't gonna do anything special at all, then you could, it's risky, but you could even short a call and a put to try to bet against volatility. The drawback of buying options is that time works against you. In a futures contract or in a perpetual swap, when you're trading order flow, you have really as much time in the world as, as you want. Um, you know, nothing about uh, funding rates, but in options, your, your option's gonna expire eventually. Um, that's a guarantee. And that's something that can be either quite good or can be quite bad. Final thing is the learning curve of options is, is pretty famous to be quite complex. This can make it pretty tough to master, but I do encourage you guys, if you haven't looked at options yet, they're actually a pretty cool way that you can trade based off of 
order flow. All right, so now I'm going to go to two versions of Bookmap. One version of Bookmap that hasn't been introduced yet. Let's go to it. So this is a beta version of Bookmap. So this, uh, this is called Bookmap Web. And what I'm actually going to do, guys, is I am going to send you guys the URL. There you go. So you guys should have all gotten that URL if you want to go uh, look at that too. So this offers three contracts of uh, crypto. We have Ethereum, BitMEX, Bitcoin, BitMEX, Bitcoin, Binance Futures. Right now, you are looking at the last day of order flow from Binance Futures. And what I really like about this is that you have a ton of information at your fingertips. If you want, you can even look at the order flow of the past month with this. And this is just really interesting because, I mean, you can just see just how strong the sellers are around here, which would have been a pretty good opportunity for us to enter short or to buy a put. You can see how the liquidity was filled here and how liquidity was continued to be continuing <coughs> continuing to be to be filled here. And then we can see where the market buys began to take over. And this would probably be an opportunity for us to think about buying at around September 12th, September 13th, where you finally begin to see some green bubbles instead of you know these constant red large cells. This would be a time for us to buy. And really, it's just really nice to see the last um, month of order flow. All right, so let's go back to the one day. This is something that I always get very excited about because I am obsessed with data. I love trying to get uh, as much data on my hands as possible because I believe that if you, if you also are a fan of data, it gives you two advantages. One is practice. What you can do with this is you can go back in time and you can practice the order flow from any time you want. Uh, I know this is in beta, so this might not work, but if I hit August 12th, let's see if it takes me there. I don't know. I, yeah, it's, it's still in beta, so it's, it's, a, it's a little bit buggy now, but it, it won't be in the future likely. But what I love about this is that you can practice as much as you want. Like if I want to do this, which I would love to, Okay, hopefully this doesn't cause any seizures or anyone to puke out their coffee. Just close your eyes if you don't like the flashing colors. <laughs> okay, so what we can do here is I can say, okay, how can I best utilize this data? Well, guess what? We kind of know what's gonna happen in the future, but we also kind of don't. This can give you opportunity to practice how good you are at trading order flow. So if you look at this market right here, I honestly, guys, I don't remember what happened September 18th. Uh, I just don't remember. You know, I don't have a photographic memory of what happened, but we can even start to decipher, huh, what's going on here? Do we think that this is more bullish or bearish? And we can get a definite answer once I scroll to the right. So this data can give you a great opportunity to become a lot better than other order flow traders because you're constantly practicing. And that constant practice is gonna give you better pattern recognition, okay? So if I look here, do you guys think that this is more bullish or bearish? Again, I can promise you I don't know the answer although I am leaning one way that I'm not gonna say yet, but let's say in the short term, would you rather buy this market or sell this market? And if you're brave enough, you can post it in chat. Um, but again, don't look up the answer, that's, that's no fun. Um, but uh, do you think that this is, do you think that this is bearish that, you know, that this offer is gonna make price go lower? Or do you think this is bullish, we're gonna burst right through uh, 11,000? 11, 11, okay. So hopefully a few of you have made up your mind. Okay, I could be completely wrong with this, like completely wrong, but to me, this looks a little bit more bullish. So I like to think probabilistically. So what that means is I'm not married to the idea of this being 100% bullish. I'm not married to the idea of this being 100% bearish. Instead, the way that I view the market, guys, is I say, huh, it seems to me that from this setup, there's about a 66 to 70% chance that the price goes up. Yes, I made up that probability, but the point is to tell you guys, you never, ever, ever, and I should totally stress this, you never should think in terms that price is 100% going to go up or 100% going to go down. If you do that, that is a way to lose all your money, okay? You should always be assigning probabilities that are not 100 or 0% of how likely it is for price to go up. So I'm giving this about a 70% chance that it will rise, but I could 100% be wrong, and that's okay. That would be the 30% chance. So it looks like I would say I'm a little bit wrong so far, but let's see. Oh, no, no, I am not wrong. Okay, well, complicated. I guess in the short term, I was very, very bullish, but price did go against me a little bit. So if I had entered at around the, uh, let's say around the, the upper 10,900s, and then price goes down to the 10,800s, I probably would have held my position. I know 2020 hindsight, but this just, to me, guys, this just to me looked really bullish. I know that we get this kind of weak sell-off, 
But this week's sell-off is actually a blessing in disguise because it allows us to buy lower. So my 70% probability that price goes up would probably still, yeah, probably be maintained here. And, and price does in fact go up because it just this offer just looks like it was about to get burst through. Now we see some some selling here on on this bidding right here, and this to me looks a little bit uh, a little bit bearish. Let's see. Yeah, so price is just kind of ranging here. But, ooh, we have a large bit added here, a large, large amount of Bitcoin being uh, limit, limit bought here, bidded here. Does it look like price is respecting it, though? Let's, let's get a little bit more. Oh, okay. I give you guys, like, no time. Well, yeah, this was quite bearish. Um, we, we do get some decent market buys coming in, but then this large market sell is just like, nope, goodbye to your market buys. So at this point in time, I would say that there is, hmm. If I want to assign another probability of the chance that price falls or rises, I actually want you guys to think this to think this one through. Do you think that there's a greater probability that price rises from here or greater probability that price falls? Um, and if you want, you can even assign your own probability. You could say, I'm moderately confident that price is gonna rise. I'm gonna give it a 60% chance. And if you think that there's a 60% chance that price rises, then your, your size of position should be smaller. If you think there's an 80% chance that price rises, then you can enter into a larger long. But the important thing that I keep stressing is you should never be thinking there's a 100% chance that price rises because that's impossible. Anything can happen and anything will happen. Um, that's why probabilities are best hedge against the future. Price does absolutely nothing here. Okay, come on, price do something. So it looks like that this went down. So if I had said this is a 60% chance of going up and a 40% chance of going down, that's okay if it goes down because, I mean, it's not like I said there's a 95% chance that price goes up. I said there's a 60, right? Now we see a large amount of bidding added here, but we do see something that looks moderately bearish. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah, so it looks like price goes up and back down. This still to me looks a little bit more bearish. I don't know what you guys think. Um, I could I could be completely like off here, but I would just give it a greater probability that price will fall rather than uh, rise. And yay, I, oh man, boy, was I right. Yep. So it looks like price really does say, Bennett, you were, you were correct on this one. You may have been kind of wrong in the last two, but <laughs> oh Lord, am I correct, you know, here. And hopefully you guys are too. Let's go look at the limit orders here uh, before I, I take you guys to live data. There are a lot of bids being added here, but I have to stress to you guys, these are not being respected. Why are they not being respected? I don't see any market buys anywhere around here that excite me, that make me think that price is just gonna moon or you know spike. What I see is just a, lar a lot of large bids that just look like they're lambs for the slaughter. It looks like a lot of these bids added are just very likely to get filled um, because of the strong market selling that just knows no bounds, you know? And then the buyers are just unable to really do anything impressive. So we get a sell off continue, right? And an interesting thing to think about here, and the final thing that I'm gonna tell you guys is think about trap traders. This is more complex for sure. And again, sorry for the constantly shifting you know, thing here, but where do you think a lot of trap long traders are? I'll bet you guys there are a lot of them around here. A lot of people who had entered into long positions are here, and that is likely to cause resistance it will be tougher for price to just rise or, or beyond this price point in the future because of how many longs are probably here. And if price ever goes up to that point, they're probably gonna sell off at break even, right? So we're gonna need multiple touches before price can uh, go up, unless we shake out the longs, of course. And you can actually kind of see that here. Uh, I know that that is a lot of depth there. So you can actually see here that price just is unable to go higher. And I'm pretty confident that the reason price just did not go any higher here was because of how many trap traders that were here. There were so many longs that had bought here that if price had gone any higher, it would have probably just been sold off. Uh, Bennett, we're not hearing you. I don't know if something happened to your mic. Or at least I can't not hear you. Uh, can everyone hear Ray Bennett? Hello. Can everyone hear Bennett? Yeah, Bennett. Me? Yeah, you 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 cut out there for for a bit. Oh. Uh, just just about uh, you know 20 seconds or so. Oh sure. Uh, you're, you're back though. Oh great. 
So um, that was a little fun foray into the web version of, um, of Bookmap. But now let's go to you know the, the, the best version of Bookmap, which is the desktop version of, of, of Bookmap. So you're looking at the past seven to eight hours of data from Bitmax. I'm gonna talk about this and and then I'm going to field any questions that you guys have. So if you guys want to ask me any questions about order flow or about trading options, futures, or spot, or really what the best strategies that I think are for uh, for trading order flow, you can you can just post in chat and uh, I'll try to answer them. So what we can see here is overall this looks to me quite bare uh pardon me quite bullish to me just seems quite bullish if we look at the beginning of this sell-off and then that uh began this demand run around here if you look at what happened around 25th of september at around uh, six o'clock we can see that a large offer was added right you see that large large offer that was added around the prices of 10,645. what i love to do is a little test when you look at a large offer or a large bid added go look at how price reacts immediately to it this price climb closer to it or does price go farther away from it? Price climbing closer and closer to an offer increases the probability that I think, I mean, price is gonna just burst right through it and rise into a uptrend, of course. So that's what happens here. The very second that this large amount of supply was, was added, what does price do? Guys, price just rises. It does not care. Um, price just doesn't really seem to care. We do have a bit, a large bid added at lower prices, but price seems to really, really care about this. Seems like this demand really just pushed price higher. And even when we get to here at the at this point around 7:45 Eastern time, we get that close to this offer. And what I've noticed is that this offer was placed what like uh, 80, 70, 80 dollars away from current market price at the time, and price just continued to climb closer to it. So this to me is quite bullish, and this to me is a sign that price is just going to probably burst through the offer, which it did. So that's something that I want you guys to uh, know about. And I also talked about this in my order flow course. You should always analyze how does price react to a large amount of demand? How does price react to a large amount of supply added? If you can discern that, that will help you in a lot of your trades. It, and it can also provide you with a greater probability that you know price will go against it, okay? Then what we see here is we do begin to see that the market sellers are getting a little bit stronger, as you can see. And I'm actually gonna zoom into the last hour of trading. Uh, just to show you guys that. So it looks like the market sellers were getting uh, a little bit stronger, but then we see this demand that uh, this demand run that just is bursting right up. Now the current order book is leaning toward offers. You can see that from that thing that says book volume. It says minus, you know, oh, it's constantly changing. But typically, one of the most bullish signs, and this might sound a little bit strange, but one of the most bullish setups in order flow that I have noticed is when you see a large amount of offers at higher prices, but price doesn't care. Price just keeps getting bought, bought up higher and higher and higher and higher. That's a sign that price, that, that the market buyers are much stronger than the, the limit sellers. And that's a sign that price is gonna probably rise. And I think that's kind of what happened here, especially around here. We can see that there's a large amount of offers added around here, clustered, but does price care? No, price just gets bought right back up. This is a sign right around here for potentially taking a long scalp, a short-term buy. The reason we probably want to look for a short-term buy and maybe get a pullback to uh, to enter in on is price seems to not really care about all these offers. Even though all this supply is here, price is able to just burst right through it. And this is a sign that the market is bullish, right? Now, if we look at even more recent, if we want to discern, hey, can we predict the next five minutes? Can we predict the next 20 minutes? Well, my answer is yes. So actually, I'm going to take a look at the 30, 30 uh, timestamp. Oh, perfect. Let's go analyze this. So to me, this still looks bullish. Uh, we, this just to me looks quite bullish. I'm not really seeing much reason to sell here. I'm seeing a lot more reason that this looks like price is going to go higher. It looks like the market sellers at this current moment are unable to do anything worthy. I mean, anything worthy to note. It just seems like the market right now is tipped in the hands of the buyers. Now, in order for that to completely switch, I would have to see a very large market sell, so very a very large red bubble, and I'd have to see potentially some bids being added, and then price just trickling lower, filling bids. Am I seeing that happen right now? No, 
no, no, what I'm seeing is some offers being added and price doesn't really seem to care. Uh, it seems like although these offers are being added, price is getting bought up nonetheless. Uh, and I can actually show you guys that in a super short term thing right here. This is like beyond short term, but let me actually uh, do this. Oh, perfect, much, much better. We can even see that this offer was pulled. Um, so to me, in the short term, anything can happen. Price could go down 20, price could go up 20, but I think in the next hour, in the next half hour to an hour, I think price is more likely than not to continue rising and filling liquidity at higher prices. Okay, guys, so that has been my analysis of the current market, which is short-term bullish. And we've talked about Bookmap Web and how you can use Bookmap uh, Web, not only for live data, but also for practice. Because if, you, if you've seen any of my videos, if you've gotten any of my courses, you would know that the thing I always obsess about is practice and pattern recognition. The guy or the girl who practices constantly, who works very hard to hone their skills in order depth, hone their skills in options trading, futures trading, whatever, that's the person who's gonna do quite well. The person who obsesses over risk management, over limiting risk and over past patterns, that's the kind of person that I'd wanna put my money on. But the kind of person who just, you know, uh, thinks something is bullish and then buys everything they possibly can, that person's gonna fail. Because even if they get it right one time, and they bet it all again, eventually they're gonna lose everything. So that's kind of my message to you guys to practice risk management. I know everyone says that, but practice risk management and get out of the mindset that price has a 100% probability of rising or falling. It does not. I could be completely wrong. And if I, I would say that this is about a 70% chance the next hour, the price will be higher than 10,655. But Guys, that gives it a 30% chance that price will fall, and 30% is higher than you think. That's three out of a 10 occurrences. So always think in terms of probability and always think in terms of limiting risk. If you can master those two things and you can practice, well, then I'd put my money on you, all right? Okay, so it looks like we are almost out of time, but you guys can ask any question you want here. Um, so far, it doesn't look like anyone said anything in chat. So uh, if, you got, if you want to be that first brave soul to, to do so, well, then be my guest. And yeah, I no, will there, there's some questions here in the, oh. um, the, oh, the questions read, field. Yeah. I couldn't read any of the chat. I was just reading the chat. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, no, oh, no wow. problem. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I, I, didn't, I thought that you guys were all silent, but I see I'm seeing all these messages now. Now going short. Wow, first time for good. Da, 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 da. Okay. B, FinTech. How did... Okay. So I'm looking through a lot of question, bookmap web. Okay, let me answer this one. What Bitcoin exchange do you suggest for futures and options? I thought US, da, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so for futures and options, uh, Binance is a wonderful exchange. So Binance and Binance Futures is an exchange that I would recommend for trading, um, for trading futures. Now, if you want to trade options, there are two exchanges I would recommend for you. One of them is Deribit, D. E R I B I T, and then the other one is called Delta Exchange. These two exchanges allow options trading. Okay. Now let's see. Uh, another guy has a question: Do the normal option Greek supply and crypto options? 100%. All the Greek supply, but the one thing you have to know about cryptocurrency options is guess what? There isn't uh, a dividend, and there also isn't interest rates that you need to worry about. So if you want to get deep into the Black Scholes model, uh, I know maybe 10% of you will understand this, but um, put the dividend and put the interest rate at 0% when you calculate the Black Scholes, okay? Uh, Scott Schultz, how do we know if any particular volume DOP is initiating a new position versus covering an open position? That is an awesome question, Scott, thank you. So how we can actually know that is through open interest. So what you can do is you can look at a bunch of different websites that I can uh, I can tell you guys about one of those websites is called Coinalyze C O I N A L Y Z E Coinalyze gives you open interest data for every single cryptocurrency that you want. Another website is trdr.io. These two uh, websites can give you open interest data. Open interest tells you when people are opening or closing positions. So here's how you do it. Let's see you see a very large volume dot, a very large green volume dot, you see a lot of market buying. You go look at open interest and you see that open interest has now increased by $4 million. 
that to me is telling me that a likely a very large buyer had just opened a position, which to me is more bullish than bearish. Okay. So I hope that that really quick uh, question um, uh, answered. Okay. Can you please type the website name here? Yeah. Okay. So I can do uh, TR. Let me just type that out. Uh, oops. Is it not letting me? Uh, okay. So I'm actually going to post some here and coinalize um, exchanges. So you guys can go to chat and go read that. Uh, Binance, Deribit, uh, Delta Exchange. And then another great exchange is the FTX Exchange that I highly, highly recommend. Okay, cool. So repeat re re repeat last site. I think you mean repeat last slide. Um, you can just do that in the recording. You can just go back to uh, to the recording and yeah, get, get that way. So I'm looking through... Um, I'm looking through the questions here. Bear it. A lot of people are saying bearish, 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 bearish. This looks bad. This looks bearish. Okay, yeah. So it looks like a lot of you um, probably got a lot of this right. But I hope I hope many of you were able to learn um, to learn uh, a lot from this little demonstration. Where is he writing this? Jerry Jocko just uh, asked. Are you are you asking where I where I'm recording this? Um, hmm. Okay. No, he's looking for the links. Uh, uh, oh, it's in, it's in the no. chat. It's in chat. Yeah, I threw it in the chat. Uh, if you guys can go navigate there. No, the website. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, uh, Jerry, I, I put the website in the chat. I don't know if you can read it, but uh, I put exchanges. I put uh, a few things there. So. And right. uh, also, um, I just wanted to, to yeah. mention. Um, uh, book map, uh, most of these that you had mentioned here, FTX, Deribit, um, BitMEX, Binance, Binance Futures, I mean, these are mm -hmm. all, uh, book map connects to all of them. Uh, Great. So, uh, you know, if you go to the connectivity section in book map and then, and then click on crypto, you'll see uh, all the different exchanges. Moreover, um, in the future here, I don't know when exactly, but it's a new product that we're working on that we, you will be able to make your own, um, uh, um, uh, instruments that will have a, a, a consolidated book. So basically you can look at multiple exchanges within one chart. Okay. So, so you want to really understand the liquidity and all the different markets. Um, then this would be the way to do it. It's, uh, it's, it's really, it's really great. It's, it's something, uh, uh that'll oh, yeah. make you like a market maker basically. But, uh, anyway, just wanted to mention that. Yeah, um, I also found a previous question who said, dang, he let Bookmap continued, uh, stayed on for weeks. Wow. So uh, I, I know this might seem a little bit strange, but I actually didn't do that. Bookmap Web gives you free, at the current moment, free access to months worth of order flow data. This is amazing. This is something at least to make me stay up to like 5 a.m. Uh, analyzing order flow from like August 2nd, because I'm obsessed with this stuff. Um, but no, I did not leave, I did not let Bookmap kind of just run for uh, a year and just stare at a computer screen. And that sounds terrible. Um, it, it's all it's all there for you on the on the uh, Bookmap web website, which I put in the chat. If you want to go get a link to that, um, and if you couldn't find that, just private message me after, and I'll I'll shoot you with the link. So yeah, really really cool site uh, in beta. All right, let's see. Oh, a lot more questions coming. Uh, where can we? Where can we find, someone said, where can we find the best videos which explain the, big, the book map functions in detail? I think that that's something that would come more from uh, the book map, book map team themselves. If you want more strategy, uh, you can go to book map for, for their team. If you want the functions, you can also go there. But if you want uh, scenarios of order flow, I have written a guide. Let's see if I can do my quick shameless plug. Um, this is the live guide right here. So what I did was I wrote all of this, which is 60 different scenarios of order flow that I've noticed and hopefully can help you guys with all these different videos as well. And what I also did was I, I put in a lot of practice questions because again, I'm obsessed with people practicing and pattern recognition from that. So if you guys are interested in this, then you can go to my website and go pick this up. But I have a bunch of different things that I think will help you guys a lot. Um, and if you want to become, you know, if you're really serious about this and you want some practice and some more strategy, then you guys can go check that out. All right, so someone asked, what are the settings used by Bennett? Um, that's a, so, well, 
There aren't that many settings from Bookmap Web, so I, I will answer that. From Bookmap Web, I just kind of use the gen general settings. But if you're asking about the settings used by Bookmap uh, uh, Desktop, it's really just what you're looking at here. I'm not really doing anything too fancy. You know, you can see where the scales are for for the for the brightness of dot, I mean, the size of the dots, and brightness of order flow, and my color scheme. Uh, I also really like the book and volume part here. One thing I will notice, uh, what, pardon me, one thing that I will mention is there are additional indicators from Bookmap that are helpful. But for me, I actually found that uh, it was better just to simplify. Uh, so my settings are very basic, um, Munir Hider Hater. Um, I like to I like to just be very simple and basic, but you know you can be more complex if you want to. Someone asked, what exchange do you use for analyzing Bitcoin order flow, BitMEX or Binance? My answer to that is I use BitMEX, XBT USD, Binance Futures. Those are the two main I would do. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Coinbase Pro, also known as GDAX, which you can also see on the left tab here. I don't love it. Um, that's spot trading. Um, but what I what I do love is BTC USDT. Um, Bitcoin traded to Tether on Binance Futures. And of course, what you're looking at here is just Bitcoin from BitMEX. You say I am using Bookmap Crypto, but it looks different. Um, well, you can just PM me after this and, uh, you know, we can talk about settings and the nitty gritty of, uh, of that. Thank you for your answers. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm just reading over some of this. All right. Yeah, seems like you guys had a lot of good, uh, a lot of good, good, uh, good questions here. Sorry, I wasn't able to see this before. I, I was, I was actually just reading the chat, and I thought that no one was talking, and I was just like, oh, okay, guess I'll just solo this one. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm glad I saw all the, uh, the questions around here. Yeah, I am happy to be here. Happy to help you guys. Um, like, like I said, I'm obsessed with this stuff. I, I love, love, love pattern recognition and watching the live fight between supply and demand of the market. And what I recommend is if you want to if if you want to get quite good at reading this, then go to Bookmap Web and go look at the past few months of data. Go through every single day and practice, practice, practice. Look at what typically leads to a bullish pattern. Look what typically leads to a bearish pattern. Well, what what I would also recommend is if you're having a lot of problem problems with risk management or stop loss placement. You can also look into the use of options trading. And I know I've mentioned this before, but I mention it because it's what I do all the time. I, I love trading options. And the reason I love it is because you don't need to use a stop loss if you go long on options. Because if you go long on options, your loss is limited to your premium, right? So that allows you to take some really good risk reward trades that will be you know, probably wrong more often than not. But the one time you get it right, you can really get it right. So if you haven't uh, learned about options yet, there's a great website that, that I would recommend called Tasty Trade. I don't know how many of you guys know Tasty Trade, but it's a group of options traders that give free strategy and free guides that are amazing. Really, really good stuff. So if you want to go learn more about that kind of trading, then uh, go, go over to Tasty Trade. So that's my two cents on how to trade uh, order flow. Okay. And yeah, like I said, oh. Excellent. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Continue. No, fine. Oh no, all, all I was saying is uh, I was I was going to comment on the current um, order to current uh, order flow. Yes, yeah, so this still to me looks quite bullish. It looks like we have a bit of ranging, and it looks like there could actually be trap sellers in the lower 10,600s. Um, the reason I say that there might be trap sellers is we see a lot of selling at lower prices that was not really respected because price is higher. And if you go look at open interest, I think that you will probably see open interest rising, indicating a lot of trapped short sellers at lower prices, which is bullish. So that's just what I wanted to say. Okay, great. Um, so uh, yes, uh, Jerry, I, I've put um, into the chat several times here, um, Bennett's uh, contact information. If you want more um, uh, from him, his email, et cetera, it's all in there. You'll see it in the chat, okay? Uh, and um, uh, this will be recorded. Uh, and uh, give me, you know, it'll take some hours here, but uh, we will put it up on our YouTube channel uh, later today. Uh, and um, uh, let's see, um, yeah. And also, uh, Bennett's um, uh, education will be available. Uh, it's available now from his website. You can just go to the link right now. Uh, it will be also on our Bookmap Marketplace. Uh, so if you're interested in in that. Um, and um, 
uh, let's see, any uh, last comments that you, you, you have, uh, Bennett? Uh, no, I, I was really happy for you guys to all join me and uh, keep practicing, stay sharp, and manage your risk. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the next one. All right, excellent. Uh, thank you very much, Bennett. Um, uh, very nice presentation. Uh, and I um, uh, hope you guys uh, uh, took something away from this about uh, just some very, very simple things that, uh, uh, you know, uh, looking in the order flow here. Uh, and, uh, and like Bennett said, you practice this, you'll, you're going to you're going to start to understand like what to do with uh, some of these patterns here. Uh, and uh, maybe you want to reach out to Bennett um, uh, for further education, et cetera. OK, uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, this wraps up the, uh, the the series here for this week. We'll do it again uh, in the future. But uh, uh, thanks for for coming, everybody. And, and thanks again, Bennett. Yeah, happy to be here. OK, bye bye, everybody. Bye. There we go. Bennett, if you can...